Thursday. I hope you are all having a awesome night. I'm trying to turn my other sound down here so Hello Eileen, how are you? Is everybody ready for a fun night of trivia, I hope? Hello, Jaden. Hi, Jerry. How are you? Any new babies yet, Jerry? Hi, Sherry. Welcome in. I just had to go out and chase my dog around. My neighbor was out with their big black lab and my little one doesn't like them. No babies today, Jerry? Uh, I'm going to keep watching for videos of new babies. I'll give it another minute before we start the trivia. How was everybody's day? I hope it was well. I put a video up this morning and um, when I was on Dawn Aaron's panel with her, she had asked about some other things that I had liked to do and I had told you guys I dabbled in painting a little bit. So I did a video this morning and showed some of my paintings. Um, I'm not the best painter by any means, but um, they were just something I kind of drew out and thought it would be fun to do. So I showed you guys my paintings. You ready for the kids to go back to school, huh? I <laughs> got some more yard work to do. Our weather took a turn for the worst. We were 83 on Tuesday it was 83 sunny here and yesterday the temperatures took a nosedive they went down back into the 50s 30s at night uh, crazy weather today it was rainy and cloudy and gloomy all day it was just ucky hi Nancy welcome in I do have some really fun trivia questions this week, and I apologize for um, last week. Hello, Anthony. How are you, sweetie? Do not pay any attention to the night bot. Um, I, I'm still trying to work on him, so I, I kind of gave up on him for a while. My girlfriend, Dawn, is going to help me work on him, so... I have just been busy, busy puttering around with yarn. Um, I did get a cup or a package out today. Got a few other things finished up today. <laughs> that night by, I tell you, he's something else. Um, I do want to thank all of my new... Uh, family members, I am up over 500. I so I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Um, I do need watch hours. If anybody could run my playlist, I would appreciate it. Yes, Nancy, I look forward to starting her uh, crochet along tomorrow. I am super excited to get that started. I do have some three weight cotton yarn I think I am going to use in different uh, colors. Not all set on my colors exactly just yet, but I do have some yarn in mind. And it doesn't have to be a three weight. I do have some pretty four weight um, I was thinking about using as well. Uh, some Caron Simply Soft in that color. Uh, blue lavender or lavender blue 
I was thinking about trying that color too. So if you guys are ready, I do have some interesting trivia questions this week. How many states have you been to? Out of all 50 states, how many states have you visited? I have been to about 15 of the 50 states. Too many for you to count? Hi, Ivy. Thank you for coming in. And thank you for the other beautiful pen. I love it. It goes great with this one. <laughs> Out of all the states that you did visit, which state was your favorite? Sherry, you've been to 10. Nancy, you've been to 48. Jerry, more than half. Sherry, Florida was your favorite. Nancy, Arizona. Alaska for Jerry. Out of all the states I've been to, I would have to say that Idaho was probably my favorite because of the the part I visited, which was Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. That was just absolutely gorgeous. And Montana is also a beautiful state. Does anybody know what the first four states were? Oh, your dad was a truck driver, Nancy? My real dad was too. Does anybody know what the first four states were in the United States? Nope, not those ones, Nancy. No, Eileen, you cannot Google or ask Alexa. Nope, not Virginia. Sherry, you got the very first state ever was Delaware. And then Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and then Georgia. Those were the first four states in the United States. The next one is a crochet question. And it just, out of the blue, I thought of it. How many must makes do you have on a list Sherry, I'm not sure how New Jersey got in there. It was just listed as the third state. When I, when I look up trivia questions to ask, I always ask for the answers. And when I did it, it said that Delaware was the very first state, then Pennsylvania, then New Jersey, and then Georgia. Civics, you're leaving. <laughs> you just have two, Eileen, too many to count. I have too many to count as well on my must like make list. On your must make list, who are the creators of the ones that you want to make the most? Mine is Fiber Spider and 
crystal, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to make you guys use your brains. <laughs> you might not like the rest of my questions either. <laughs> Sherry Crystal, yeah. Crystal has got so many beautiful things, and each time she comes out with a new one, I have to add it to my must-make list. Question number three. What sport was featured on the first curved U.S. coin? Fiber Spider did, Nancy. I believe he was the one that did that one. Eileen says basketball. No. Hi, Michael. Welcome in. I'll go slower, Ivy. And I'll even repeat it. What sport was featured on the first curved U.S. coin. Sherry Knowles, you are correct. It was baseball. It had a baseball glove appearing on the coin. <clears throat> Number four. What country is the largest in the world? And remember, no Google or Alexa. Yeah, exactly, I or Sherry. No, not Greenland. Jerry, you are correct. Hello, Shirley. Hello, Enchanson. Jerry was correct. It is Russia. They with fifty seven million five hundred and ten thousand square miles. That's pretty big. Number five, M&M's fruit chews candy would eventually become what popular candy? No, not Skittles. Not gummy bears. Not Skittles. Nope, not, oh, Nancy, you got it. Starburst. Hello, Don, sweetheart. That's okay. What is a group of crows called? I kind of like this trivia thing. Sherry, you got it. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's a name for a, a group of crows is called murder. <laughs> You guys are smart. Okay, number seven. This one will get your mind thinking a little bit. How many dots appear on a pair of dice? Welcome in fibromyalgia yarn.
No, Sherry. Nope. Not that one either, Ivy. Nancy, you got it. 42. There's 21 dots on each dice. So a pair would be 42. Compared to their body weight, what animal is the strongest? A dung beetle, an elephant, an ant, or a cow? Nope. Sherry Knowles got it. A dung beetle. Can you believe that? Ants are very strong. They really are. For such a tiny little thing, they, they are very, very strong. Hopefully this one will get you guys really thinking. Number nine is... <laughs> yeah, dung can get heavy. <laughs> Number nine, which is the only part that is fully grown from birth? Nope, not eyes. Welcome in, Michelle. Nope, not your nose. Told you, this one will really get you guys thinking. Sherry, you're, you're the closest. Hello, Jonathan. Thank you for coming in. Sherry was the closest with ears. It's actually the innermost ear, the ossicle or the stapes is what they call it. It is three millimeters in size when you are born, and that's the size it stays. What country has the highest life expectancy? <laughs> Not the US, yeah, you got that right. <laughs> Not China, well, Hong Kong, so I guess, yes, yeah, Sherry, you got it. Or Japan, Hong Kong, wherever, I don't know where it is, Chan Japan or China, but it just said Hong Kong. They have the longest and highest life expectancy. Where would you be standing if you were standing on the Spanish steps. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they don't know their age. <laughs> the ground. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not the pyramids. I think I stumped. Oh, Nancy got it. Rome. Yes. 
Good, good job, Nancy. <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> this one should be easy for you guys. What is the most common surname in the United States? That was a good guess, Nancy. Very good, Smith. I knew that one. You guys all got that one. That was easy. Who painted the Mona Lisa? Nancy, you. <laughs> yes, Leonardo da Vinci. A guy with a brush. <laughs> I love you, Ivy. <laughs> Oh, you couldn't remember his name? <laughs> if I didn't have the answers already, <laughs> I probably would be scratching my head going, I don't know. <laughs> Your brain is starting to smoke. <laughs> oh. What is the loudest animal in the world? I'm not sure why the Mona Lisa is so famous. <laughs> Humans, I <Ivy. laughs> A spoiled three-year-old human? <laughs> Your grandson? An elephant? Jerry, you're kind of close. And <laughs> neighbors? <laughs> Your son, Jerry's the closest so far. It's a type of whale, but what type of whale? Nope, not a dolphin. Not a humpback. And Chance and Cindy, you got it. A sperm whale. A sperm whale is the loudest animal in the world. Now you guys are too smart. I'm going to have to start writing down harder trivia questions. Because I only did 15 and we're on the last one. <laughs> the name says it all. <laughs> Ivy. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. <laughs> You're going to have a brain overload. <laughs> How many bones are in the human body? Five hundred and ninety? Nope. Nope, not two sixty one. Eileen, you got it. 206 bones in the human body. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> Too many to break. 
Well, you guys are too smart for me. I have to write down harder and more questions for Trivia Thursday. <laughs> A1, A2, A3, IB. <laughs> oh. Well, that was all the questions I had, and you guys answered them all. So next week, there's going to be more and harder questions. <laughs> But now I guess if you guys want, we can... <laughs> How many licks does it do? <laughs> Ivy? <laughs> I've never tried to see how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. <laughs> Since we're so smart, Ivy has time to make us a mosaic tutorial tonight. <laughs> no, you'll have a brain fart. <laughs> I'll make some easy and some hard and... Yeah, between Sherry and Jerry, boy, they were on it tonight. They had it. So what are you guys' plans for this weekend? <laughs> yeah, on the SATs, I remember that. I was always told that test like that to just, when you read the question, if it was multiple choice to answer each one, and use the one that made the most sense. <laughs> Hello, Sally. Welcome in. I'm still having a hard time believing that a sperm whale is the loudest animal in the world compared to, I mean, you hear other animals, monkeys and stuff like that, they're super loud. How in the world can a sperm whale be the loudest animal in the world? And it's underwater. Yeah, good thing it is under the ocean. <laughs> You just did everything you needed in your lifetime. <laughs> yeah, they are, Nancy. Those monkeys, some of them things can screech. And the way that lions can roar and cheetahs are loud, bears, it, I just, that blows my mind that sperm whales are the loudest animals in the world. If it does happen to get nice this weekend, I'm hoping to work outside. Yes, and birds, the doves around here are something else. I'll tell you, that cooing constantly because I got dove nests in my neighbor's pine trees and that's all I hear all the time are the doves. And then my little chickadees because they're screeching at me because their bird feeder's empty. <laughs> Yeah, and seagulls. Yeah, seagulls are pretty loud, too. Geese. They're way up in the sky flying, and you can hear them. Oh, wow, Nancy. Low of 32 and raining on and off. That could turn to s snow or slush. Yeah, humans are pretty loud, too, Eileen. I hear you. I talk pretty loud, but I'm partially deaf in my right ear. It's supposed to snow there tomorrow, Nancy. That's terrible. Rainy and on cloudy on Saturday, rainy on Sunday in Texas. Ugh. 
hopefully our temperatures will go back up. I miss, like I said, I miss like Tuesday's weather. It was perfect here. It was 83. It was sunny. The perfect gentle breeze. Did you guys uh, happen to see Dawn Yarndahl, her live last night? We have a new friend on the YouTube streets, Amy Lara. And Roosters. Yeah. I live in a community in a mobile home park and it's up in the country and we're not supposed to have chickens and roosters and stuff like that but people do up here and those roosters are something else. Oh, no thank you. Yeah, I, I added her as a family member, but I still haven't watched her video yet. And then, go figure, you guys, my luck. Google sends me, your neighbor has a goat. My one, li my one neighbor on the opposite side behind me, they had one of those little uh, pygmy goats that you can have as a pet. And they had two of them, and they were in their backyard, and I'm like, are you kidding me? We're not supposed to have those up here. <laughs> no, Nancy, I don't want to take a bet. Because <laughs> I know I'll probably end up frogging it a few times. Yeah, well, you know that blanket I was working on with that Caron cloud cake yarn. And I was doing that flutter stitch. <laughs> But, well, it got frogged. <laughs> A fainting goat? Really, Ivy? It runs in the street, surely? No way. Yeah, I... It's a beautiful stitch, but again, it just, with that yarn, it just wasn't working for me. So, I frogged it. I'm going to do a, a different stitch with it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I'm going to make me a crown that says Queen of Frogging on it. <clears throat> But I was telling you, just my luck, I got my new phone today from uh, working on four more pens. Awesome, Ivy. I can't wait to see them. I love the feel of the yarn, Sherry. It's really soft. It really is. It's super soft. It just, but that stitch just didn't, it wasn't speaking to me with that yarn. Yes, I got my phone back. They couldn't fix the old one, so they sent me a brand new one. And instead of pulling the SIM card out of my old one and sticking it in the new one, they sent me no SIM card. So it's still not activated. So I'm still without a phone until I get the SIM card on Saturday. And then they didn't bother to transfer any of my information or anything from my old phone to the new phone, they made me do it. Does anyone participate in things we're making Thursday? I know. Yeah, I'm a stickler for if if the yarn just isn't speaking to me with that stitch and I don't like the way it's looking or coming out, I will. I'll frog it and start something completely new. And if it, two or three times, if it still doesn't come out, then I just put the yarn away for a while and I'll just get something else out. 
<clears throat> yeah, I would have thought they would have taken care of that for me. Being they said, you know, send it in, we'll either fix it or give you a new phone. Well, if you're going to give someone a brand new phone, at least pull their SIM card out and stick it in the new phone and send it to them so they have everything that was on their old phone in their new phone. Instead, I had to plug it into the old phone that I did have and transfer everything over to the new phone, but till I get the SIM card, Spectrum can't activate it. I can use the Wi-Fi, but I can't text or make phone calls on it yet. Yeah, I don't think they should have kept my SIM card. That, yeah, uh, to me, I think that's kind of a, kind of a scary thing for as far as privacy or info, you know, if they kept that SIM card, I know that they're supposed to wipe those phones out completely back to a factory reset. But some of these hackers in this world are so good, who's to say they can't hack into that and get my information? <clears throat> Excuse me. I love Spectrum as far as a carrier. They're, they're fast, you know. I've, I'm never without the bars for service or anything. The speed is super good. So Spectrum is a good carrier. It was Google that I had to send the phone to because it's a Google Pixel Pro 7. So it was up to them to fix it or replace it. Even though I got the phone through Spectrum, it was under warranty. So it was up to Google to fix it. So needless to say, I've been without a phone for over a week now. <laughs> I was so happy when the FedEx man showed up this morning and he hands me the box and I'm like, yes, my phone. <laughs> $11 a month, Sherry? That's awesome. Did I call Google, Eileen? No, not yet. By the time I figured out that the phone wasn't able to make calls or anything it was already after five my time so eastern time I'm sure Google would have been closed Spectrum is sending me a new SIM card so it should be here tomorrow they overnighted it so Yeah, they could. I didn't try, though. I'll try them in the morning then, but I don't know what good it's going to do me now because I don't have the, the phone to give them any information off of it for the SIM card or anything. I don't have the IMEI number or anything, so. And I'm sure they've probably already probably ended up having to throw the phone away because if they couldn't even fix it and had to send me a new one, I'm sure they probably trashed it. I have not tried it yet, Nancy. I seen that Crystal got it. Um... The Lucky Brand yarn. I would love to try it, but I have not. I don't even know where I would buy it. Joanne has it. I know she had a video up today about Joanne's too, about if they were going to close or um, stay open. And I guess that they did file Chapter 11 uh, bankruptcy, so they are working with their uh, creditors or people that they're in debt to so that they can stay open. 
Hi, Nana Mona. Thank you for coming in. Four forty nine a ball for over three hundred yards. That's a good deal. The Ogo Premier, three for fifteen dollars. That's a good deal, too. I don't think I've ever worked with that Ogo yarn. I've seen Don Aaron had some. Yeah. So I guess they're working with their the people they're in debt to so that they can stay open. Um... And I have to agree with Crystal on this. Michael's online for shopping, there it's just ridiculous to try to order on Michael's. There's so many third party people and their website is an absolute disaster area to try to navigate through. I but Joanne's to me I think is ridiculous as to as well to order online because they send you one item at a time instead of sending you their whole your whole order at once in one box they'll send you five or six boxes and each each box is this big and it has one item in it that yes Michaels is also very expensive You have two of the Ogos, but you haven't tried them yet. I've never ordered from Michael's. I've ordered from Joann's one time online, and I will never order online from Joann's again. Exactly, Sherry. Instead of grabbing it from their store, which is 20 minutes from my doorstep to theirs, they go and they sent me orders from Pennsylvania, uh, New York, and I think it was Chicago or something, Illinois. They couldn't send it from the store that's 20 minutes from me. They had to send it from three different states. Shirley, if I if I was going to ever order again from Joann's, I think that's what I would do. I would order it online and use the deals that they got, then use the extra 20% off and go in store and pick it up. <clears throat> but I'm not I I bought all that yarn from uh Don Aaron that hand dyed uh, yarn that she did for me in the teals and the magenta with gray and blacks. I got those coming from her and then a few others that she had put up for me. Um, hopefully those will be here tomorrow. Um, and then I'm done buying yarn for a while. I've got to start using up some of the stuff I have here. I can open up my own little yarn store. <laughs> Dawn's yarn is on your wish list. Nancy, it's so worth, so worth it. The ones that I have, have already gotten from her that I got ordered from her before, they are, the colors that she does are absolutely stunning. And I can't wait to get this new order with the teals and the blacks, with the gray, with that sparkle. I am, oh, I am so excited to get those. Why wouldn't they send it to you? Because you were in Hawaii, maybe? I can't see them not. That would be... I must have missed something there with Michael and... Ivy. 
I want to make a shawl out of some of it, Ivy. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the rest of it. I do want to plan a uh, 500 milestone celebration. And I may put one or two hanks of that in there as a prize. And I've already got some other prizes set up too. I'm just not sure when I'm going to do that. Oh, okay. I see, Michael. I got, I'm not sure how many yards it is all together, Nancy. I got four skeins. Of two of them are worsted weight, which I think was 218 yards. And then two of them were fingering weight. And I'm not sure how many yards that was in those. And then I got some other ones that are coming from her that she had set aside for me that I liked the colors in. So I'm not sure how many altogether. But like I was saying, I want to set up a, a celebration for hitting the 500 milestone. <clears throat> Ivy, if I ever get monetized, yes, I will have a party. But I'm way far from that. I've, I've got, I think, 509 fam family members, but I'm only at 700 and. 80 something watch hours so I have a long ways to go <laughs> a long ways but yes if if and when I do get monetized I will have one heck of a party you don't think you will how come Good night, Jerry. Thank you for coming. I appreciate your support. Sleep well. I think to be partially monetized, you have to have 3,000 watch hours with 500 family members. And to become fully monetized, you have to have 1,000 family members and 4,000 watch hours. And if I'm at 780 something, I still need like 2200 watch hours. And that's to become mini monetized partially. So yeah, it, YouTube, it takes a lot to become monetized on YouTube. Oh, really? A horse? You're too, you're kind of quiet, Ivy. You are. <clears throat> but I think it would be fun if you had a, a little celebration. I'm sure Jen, Jen and I could set it up for you. We'll be the life of the party for you. <laughs> we'll do all the talking and be the loud ones. <laughs> yeah, the lives do help. And I go live on Mondays for the, the new stitches that I like to teach out of the Stitch Dictionary. And then Thursday is the um, is my trivia night, and then Friday mornings I just do a regular live, and we talk about whatever anybody wants to talk about, just to hang out and kind of have fun. Because this is my way of socializing with everybody. I I don't like to be out in public. This is my way of hanging out with everybody, and. Just kind of filling everybody in on what's going on with me and finding out what's going on with all of you guys. And 
So this is my my hangout, my socialization time. Thank you. I appreciate that support and I definitely will try. I can, Michelle, if you would really like me to, I can. Um, I know you had asked about the arch stitch and there was a couple of them in there and that's why I didn't specify which one. I know which one I'm going to do. I just didn't specify which one was in the book. I just wanted to see mainly if anybody was interested in the arch stitch at all. And so far you guys are along with the peacock fan stitch. So, but yes, I, if that's something that you would like, I can start adding what page number and what number the stitches. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a people person. I, I have severe social anxiety. I refuse to take medication that the doctors have tried to put me on for it. Crochet is my therapy. It is my relaxation. That's my, my way of unwinding. But I, I have such terrible social anxiety that you ask my roommate, Mr. Cozy, he will tell you, I, I cannot stand to be out in public. I will go to my doctor's appointments because that's mandatory every other month that I go. But other than that, I might go to Walmart maybe once a month, once every other month. I don't leave my house unless I absolutely have to. <clears throat> if I need fresh air, I can go in my backyard. It's all fenced in. Nobody can see me. I can't see nobody. So... And it, yeah, I and it's not that I hate people. It's just I I don't trust many people. I have a very very hard time trusting people. Yeah, I don't even like to see the doctor either, but I have to because she does weight checks on me because I have a rare stomach disorder. So and just fair warning, if I ever disappear for two, three days and you guys don't hear from me, it's because of my stomach. I get rare attacks from this stomach disorder I have, and they literally will put me down in bed for three, four days or in the hospital. And most of the time, I'm to I get hauled out of here in an ambulance when those attacks come. Ivy, I could never avoid you. I got timers set. I've got alarms. I've got it wrote down everything for when Ivy comes on. That's, I'm not, -uh. that's my time. Don't bother me. I've got Ivy checked. I'm ready for Ivy time. <laughs> Nancy, you still haven't looked at your book yet. Yes, I have my safe space and that's where I like to be. And that's in my house, nine times out of ten, in my bedroom, in the living room or dining room. <laughs> that's where I'll be. What hook was that that you got, Nancy? Hello, Queen's Queen Craft by Bridget. How are you? Yeah, this, this stomach disorder I have is called 
uh, cyclic vomiting syndrome. <clears throat> it's a rare disorder, mainly found in young males. How in the world I ended up <laughs> with it is beyond me, <clears throat> but I've had it for years now, and it's it's not fun. And at one point, I was below 100 pounds. I weighed 89 pounds. And since then, my doctor makes me come in every other month, whether I like it or not, to get a weight check done. And if I am not maintaining a certain weight, I'm in trouble. Nancy, I agree with that too. With with all of the sicknesses going around and germs and I can't afford to get sick like that either. You were 96 pounds at 23 years old. <laughs> yeah, I have a real hard time keeping weight on. So she, I have to go in and get my weight checked. Yeah, that's it's not a fun thing, so not anything I would wish on anybody. You skipped right over 89 pounds. <laughs> Thank you, Bridget, for coming in. I appreciate it. That's not good. 90 pounds is an awful light. That's not good at all. And hopefully they can get it figured out. Yeah, I don't eat for days when I get sick like that and when I if I do when I do start eating something it's usually just broth because that's all my stomach will tolerate and I love my coffee and I can't even have coffee I can't hold water nothing down when those attacks come Good. I'm glad you're going to see the doctor for it. Wow, good for you, Michael. That's wonderful. You could send it to me. I'll take that. Maybe then I wouldn't have to go every other month. <laughs> Maybe she'd let me go every few months. <laughs> I, I, I graduated, though, because she was making me come in once a month. But now I can go every other month because I'm maintaining where she's happy with my weight. So I won't complain. <laughs> Well, next week, I definitely will come up with some more trivia questions. I will make them a little bit harder than what they were tonight. I agree, Ivy. I agree. Antonio is wonderful for him. Nancy. <laughs> oh, you crack me up. <laughs> I do need to quit smoking, though. Yes, they tell me that I do need to quit smoking. But I don't need a doctor to tell me that either. I already know that. I don't like going to the doctor's, period. I, 
I'm with you on that, Nancy. 100%. I don't like being told what to do by a doctor. I look at it like this. It's my life. I'm going to live it the way I want. You only live once. Enjoy it. I don't want to know if the doctor's going to tell me, oh, well, you got this or you got that and, well, you need to be on this or you need to be on that. Uh, you only live once. Enjoy it. Eat what you want. Do what you want. And no doctor's going to try to extend your life. When the good Lord wants you, he's going to take you. Nothing you can do about it. <laughs> <clears throat> Chicken nuggets. <laughs> My goodness. If it's that easy to make him happy by just giving him chicken nuggets, well... Best doctor you ever had? Heck yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't understand what it is with doctors telling patients that they have to do this before they can have a surgery done or you got to do that before you can have the surgery done. Why? A surgery is a surgery. You shouldn't have to be at certain things or eat certain things or be at a certain weight to have a surgery done. If you need a surgery done, then just do it. Congratulations, Michael. That's wonderful. She wouldn't come back again. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Michael. Nancy's so hilarious, isn't she? She cracks me up. Some of the stuff she comes up with is just... <laughs> She can get me rolling uh, an IV over at Ivy's on Tuesdays. I always got to bring my Depends now. <laughs> I got to have those on when we're over at Ivy's. I got a talking scale too and I don't like it. Mine's hid too. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Yes, Bunkers, chill out. My doggy wants me. I shut my bedroom door so he can't come in here because if they hear a noise, they'll bark. Surely you're right about that. And I'm going to... Thank the good Lord right now. I have excellent insurance. I have zero copay, zero deductibles. Everything, all my prescriptions that I do have to take are 100% covered. I pay absolutely nothing out of pocket. <laughs> right off the window, it grew wings. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
The, Michael, 100%. You tell him. And you know, 90% of the healthcare system, if you go to the hospital or a doctor's office, a good majority of them smoke themselves. So telling their patients to quit when they probably do it, then yeah. Oh yeah, yep. And the, yeah, the pain is the worst in the stomach when I get those attacks. And I don't know if it's so much from the attack itself or if it's because of all of the throwing up I'm doing. But either way, yeah, it's, it's miserable. It's not fun. Yeah, I I agree, Michael. And they don't have no business telling anybody else that. <laughs> oh man, um, I have uh, United Healthcare Dual. That's what I have for my insurance, and I I love it. I love it. And on my insurance card, it's a a United Healthcare card, the Dual Complete. They even give me an allowance every month on there that you can, I get like 140 or $160 on there and I can use it to pay the electric, buy vitamins, um, it buys coffees, whatever. It's just an allowance that they give you. Thank you for coming in, Michelle. Shirley, it's uh, through uh, my... Medicare through Social Security. It's my Medicare insurance. I I hear that too. Doctors a, a person knows their body inside and out 100% you know your body and when you go to the doctor and you tell them I've got chronic pain I've had it for years and they tell you well you're too young for chronic pain or you don't you shouldn't be having chronic pain well it can't be as bad as you're saying it is you you're not in my body doctor how do you know so I agree with that 100% a doctor does not know your body the way you do. I get so upset with doctors that do that. Surely I got an early medical retirement so you could always call your, I don't know if you have an insurance representative or not. I know in the state of Washington, we have uh, insurance representatives through our uh, Medicare program. And they're the ones that found me the United Healthcare Dual Complete. So you can always call and ask. It doesn't hurt to ask and see if there's a, a program that's better than what you're on now. Michael, that's, it would be different for you because you were in the service. So yeah, I can see why yours would be different. Yep, I agree, Michael. It does. It takes something drastic for them to realize that, yes, there is something really wrong. I agree. You know what? Doctors like that, 
I don't believe need to even be doctors. If they, they can't tell you what's real and what's not real. Like I said, nobody knows your body better than you do. Really, Ivy? Here, here, and the hospitals here, if you go to the ER, they're, they're like, here, let me give you a shot of this. You, you don't have to ask. They're pumping it in you. Hello, Ray. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, Sherry, for coming in. Have a good night and you sleep well. Nancy, I know Michigan has really cut down. They're strict on, on pain medications there. My sister's a, a head uh, RN for the hospital in uh, Grand Rapids, and she says it's you're not getting anything in Michigan as far as pain medications. Not in Alabama either, Ivy. I, they won't write you scripts for pain medications, but if you have to go there for anything, that's the first thing they do is hook you up to an IV and say, pff, pff, here you go. Oh, Nancy, I'm sorry. That's... That's terrible. I, I, a lot of people, I want to say probably seven, eight years ago when the pain pill epidemic kind of really hit and people were starting to really, people were dying from overtaking it, ruined it for a lot of people that really do need it. Because now doctors don't want to give out pain medication because they're afraid they're going to get sued if somebody overdoses and dies. And it's because idiots that mistreated it and misused it ruined it for people that really do need it. So I, I understand that 100% and I, it breaks my heart because there are people that absolutely do need it and they can't get it. Yep, exactly. People that ask for it, you're automatically flagged as a drug seeker, and that's not cool. Yeah, I, Michael, I lost a few friends due to that epidemic of the pain medication overdosing all the time. It, it was just, it's horrible. Thank you, Amy Laura, for stopping in. I appreciate it. Are you kidding me? They sent you home with ibuprofen? Oh, uh-uh. I would have been so flippin' mad. And like I said, and a lot of it is because doctors just won't do it anymore because of people mistreating it and abusing it. Michael, I would agree with that 100%. Nancy, I'm sorry. That's terrible. Yeah, it just... Uh, and the pharmacy wouldn't do it? Wow. 
See, it, it, I guess each state's different. Here in Washington State, if like my pharmacy and Mr. Cozy, we use the Walmart pharmacy because they're super polite, they're super nice, they're fast. They, if if say I had refills on my anxiety medication if I was to take it and I needed a refill, they automatically will call the doctor's office and say, she has zero refills, can you please fax over a new script? And they do that for my Neurotech because I suffer from migraines. And if I have zero refills left on that and it gets filled once a month, I get eight tablets a month for my migraines. If I run out and I call and say I need a refill and there's none on my box, the pharmacy will call and get me a prescription from the doctors. I don't have to do it. See, Ivy, and that's sad. That's what's really, and that's why it makes it hard for people like Nancy's mom to get medication. It, it's just, it's really hard. And our healthcare system is going to crap in a handbag anyway. So it just, it makes it so hard when people misuse and mistreat stuff like that. And I, I guess it's about the almighty dollar to most people these days, I guess. And it's sad because a lot of people suffer because they can't get what they need. Yeah, I had a few friends pass away from that as well. And because they take one, they feel good, and then they need another one because that feeling starts going away, and next thing you know, they've popped five, six, seven of them, and then they're gone. You have to prove that you need them. Michael, do you have like um, ADHD or something like that? Because my son has ADHD and <clears throat> when he had his foot surgery done, the hospital had given him pain medication and it did the same to him. It made him so hyper Instead of relaxing him and killing the pain, it made him so hyper. I'm like, I called the doctor. I'm like, what did you give this kid? Because he's like bouncing off the walls. This isn't pain medication. Nancy, he's loving it down there. Um, he got a really good job working for a company. Um, he does fire and safety sealing for new construction buildings around windows. He does all that caulking and stuff. And he's making $29.75 an hour down there doing this job. He loves it. So they're doing really well down there. I'm, I'm so glad that he found a job he likes and... Thank you, Ray's. I was I was so happy when he called and said he had an interview with this company and that he had gotten the job. I was like, yes, <laughs> thank goodness. Yeah, my son is a and it's outside. It's it's kind of the same thing every day, but it's not because they get to go to different locations for new constructions of buildings that are being put up. So because he has ADHD, so he gets bored real easy. 
and he loves to be outdoors working, so this job was perfect for him. It just kind of fell into his lap. He filled out an application online. They called him the next day. He went in, and the guy says, do you have any experience? And he's like, well, no. He says, well, are you willing to work? He says, yep. He says, then I'll train you. He trained him right there, showed him everything, gave him a test. He passed it, hired him on the spot. So I was like, yes. <laughs> And they're loving it, the weather down there. They've got lots of places that they can go and explore and neat things to see. So I'm I'm happy that they're happy down there. I don't get to see them anymore all the time, but that's okay. Yes, New Mexico is a legal state. Nancy, it is not legal in Alabama. Um, there's a few states still that it is not legal yet. I know Washington State, it's legal. Welcome back, Eileen. Oregon is legal, uh, California is legal, Montana is not legal yet that I know of. Yeah, Texas is not legal either. <laughs> Thank you, Ivy, for stopping in. I appreciate it. And I cannot wait to see the pens. I look forward to it. It's in Hawaii, it's legal. That's cool. Yeah, I know most states, most of them are. Hello, horsing around, Willow. I say hello, my dog barks because he thinks there's somebody here. He's so funny. My little chihuahua, he's something else. Alrighty, my friends, I know it's getting late for you guys, some of you guys. I will not keep you. Really, Michael? Yeah, I know Colorado is too. I did not know it was cheaper though to go there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> You've been waiting for French fries. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, I'm going to call it a night. I will see you guys in the morning for my Friday Live, um, 10 a.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time. I was going to say Central, Pacific Central Time. I don't think that exists. <laughs> um, anyway, I will see you guys in the morning. Thank you for spending the last hour and a half with me. I appreciate it. Um, sleep well, sweet dreams, and I will see you guys all in the morning. Bye. Till next time.